Okay, so in this one, we have a skier going down a hill, um, almost like a ramp problem. In other words, they're sliding down an angle like that. Um, but it does bring forward an interesting aspect of energy in that energy is a scalar quantity. It's not a vector. So if we were doing this with ramps and stuff like that, looking at it from a kinematics point of view, we'd probably be uh, dealing with vector addition or components or something like that. Uh, whereas with energy, if it's frictionless, we're not losing any energy, we can kind of uh, consider this from a strictly scalar point of view. In other words, the height, they're just dropping 20 meters. So um, yeah, let's give this a try and show the advantages of that. So we can start off uh, E before equals E after. All right. And in the before situation, the, we take a look at it and we try and determine, okay, what's involved before? Certainly there's potential energy here because we've got this height involved. Um, kinetic energy. Well, uh, from the picture, it could be that they were already going, but we look at the question just to get clarification and it says starts from rest. Okay, so that means that the kinetic energy at the beginning is zero. And down here, when the skier gets down to here, we'll just draw them right there, and at that point, the potential energy is all gone because now they're down to where we would say the height is zero. It's down at the ground level. So we would say in this case, EP is zero, or we can cross it out, and we're gonna have some speed going on here. So we're gonna have some kinetic energy for sure. So uh, getting that into our equation, we can say we start off with lots of potential energy and it's all converted into kinetic energy. And for potential energy, MGH, and for kinetic energy, one half mv squared. All right, and the m's can cancel out. And so the size of the skier doesn't matter. And we can rearrange and solve for v. So multiplying both sides by two. And then doing the square root. And then we can plug in some numbers and 9.8 and our H was 20 and so we can work that out to be 20 meters per second. All right, so uh, with the wind resistance not being considered nor the friction of the uh, hill itself, we would end up with 20 meters per second at the bottom. And um, from a reality point of view, um, there would be a little wind resistance and there would be a little bit of friction uh, on that hill there, even if it's nice icy snow, uh, be very small friction, but there would be some friction. So um, if we were to uh, make an estimate uh, real world of where it's going to be, it's just going to be a, a bit under 20, depending on the s snow conditions there really slippery conditions and it will be just a tiny bit under 20. Um, if it's a little bit sticky snow, it'd be more under 20 from there. But um, it's a good place to start as far as understanding what's going to be happening.